I may always be remembered as Oliver North's secretary during the Iran-Contra scandal. The media and history have a way of freezing people in time, remembering them for things they have often gone beyond. Hi, I'm Fawn Hall. I really was not prepared for what happened nearly 10 years ago. The courtroom trials, televised congressional hearings, and the intense media attention and public scrutiny. Years later, I would go through a more personal battle with drugs. You might say I finally found myself again. Now let's take a look at a public figure who some say has reinvented herself, Amelda Marcos. What do you know about her? Probably her shoe closet, right? A closet that defined excess. But there's a lot more to the Imelda Marcos story than unsensible shoes. Let's find out what she has to say about her place in history. For more than 20 years, Ferdinand and Imelda Marcos presided over the Philippines as president and first lady. In 1954, Ferdinand was already a rising star in the world of Philippine politics when he met and wed Imelda Romaldez. Twelve years later, Ferdinand became president, and the first couple took up residence in Malacanang Palace. Charming, flamboyant, and energetic, Imelda was an extremely active first lady, known for being the champion of civic projects like the Cultural Center of the Philippines. She and Ferdinand were also known as extravagant entertainers, giving lavish parties and playing host to a wide range of world leaders and jet-set celebrities. The world was captivated by these images of excess, the most legendary being Imelda's notorious shoe collection, with estimates running as high as 3,000 pairs. As a result of this public extravagance, the rumor mill started wondering about how the Marcoses had acquired all this wealth on the meager president's salary, and political opposition began to build. On February 22, 1986, shortly after a highly contested presidential election, Opponents of the Marcos regime staged a bloodless coup and stormed Malacanang Palace to oust the rulers. Ferdinand and Imelda fled with their family to Hawaii, where they remained in exile. If this is life, I'd rather die in touch. Mm. And I'm going to go back, even if I have to face a bottle of bullets. It was kind of sad because we felt betrayed by our own uh, people who was uh, in the official family. And it was even more painful because at that point, my late husband was not feeling too well. We knew they would do everything to keep us away. I felt like a tree that was uprooted. It's like slow death. That's exactly how I felt. The situation for Imelda went from bad to worse. His health rapidly failing, Ferdinand Marcos finally died on September 28, 1989, in Hawaii. Then, under mounting pressure from the Philippine government to bring the Marcoses to justice, the United States indicted the Marcoses in federal court under anti-racketeering laws for some alleged improprieties with some real estate deals in New York City. It was the worst time of my life because I was alone in a foreign country facing justice of the most powerful country in the world and I was alone in their turf. My vindication came on July uh, the 2nd, my birthday, and we were found not guilty in all counts. Our defense, we did not even have to put one single document or witness uh, because it was all too clear that the Marcoses were not takers but thievers. After the trial, the press asked me, Mrs. Marcos, are you angry and bitter with America? I said, I have no anger in my heart, nor bitterness in my soul, because the American system worked. God bless America. Effective today, the Republic of the Philippines will interpose no objection to the return to the Philippines of Imelda Marcos. Nobody could stop me from going home. I really felt it was not only my human right, my constitutional right, it was a divine right. This is where I came from. This was my country. Upon her return to the Philippines on November 4, 1991, Amilda promptly did the last thing many people would have expected. She ran for office. After an unsuccessful bid for president, she staged another campaign, this time for the National Congress. 
and on May 8, 1995, she was elected by the people of the island of Leyte as the congressional representative of the 1st District. When I got elected, hallelujah, I got the freedom to love again, to serve it again, to care again. And now I'm so excited about my job because here you not only see the people, you can touch them. You have the responsibility to meet everyone, whether they care for you or not. You just have to go. It's a responsibility. Uh, there are thousands of political prisoners in jail. There are thousands. Uh, and at the same time, I have a chance to explain my side and to tell them the truth. That Marcos was not a violator of human rights. I really thank you for this certificate of appreciation. I hope that uh, I will be able to um, have a collection of, of this too, aside from shoes. The shoes was not really that mean, because when they look at you and they see it's Imelda Marcos, they immediately look down at your shoes. And then sometimes you have side benefits and compliments. Oh, she has good legs too. And so, wonderful. <laughs> My future, I think I will be blessed again by the good Lord. I will see this all cleared up vindication, truth prevailing in my lifetime. We have no fears. I know that history will be very generous to the Marcuses. <laughs>